Okay, so let's look at the resultants of special force systems. Okay, and there's four special ones that we consider. Um, and you'll see what we mean. It's nothing that you haven't seen before. Concurrent forces. Concurrent forces, remember, concurrent means that the forces act through a point. So you've got a bunch of forces like that. F1, F2, F3. And then it's very simple to get there. The resultant is just summing up the X components, Y components. There's nothing new here. Or using the parallelogram method. <clears throat> but the important thing to note is because they're going through a point, there are no moments. We don't consider moments here, right? So they're going through a single point. So there's no... It's not like if you had forces like that and like that right, acting on a body, then yes, you're going to have a resultant, but there's also going to be the rotational effect. But in this case, these forces don't have that rotational effect. So that is concurrent forces. Okay. The second one is parallel forces, which we're going to look at in this video. But I'll just hold, hold on for one second. Then we've got coplanar forces. And the coplanar just sim simply means two dimensions. So we've already looked at that, <clears throat> Article 2.6, Section 2.6. So we're not going to go over that again. That's all done in Section 2.6. It's how we deal with basically this system that I just showed you. You've got a bunch of forces acting in a single plane. Okay, and then we reduce that <clears throat> to a force and a couple. Okay, and then the wrench, a wrench... We will, we will dedicate an entire video to that. I, will, I won't speak about that now. But I want us to, to focus in this video on parallel forces. Okay. <clears throat> and, and what are parallel forces? So far, um, especially with this guy and that guy, we've basically looked at forces in two dimensions. Okay. In a plane. Acting in a single plane. Parallel forces are exactly what they say. They are forces that are parallel to each other. So let's look at sample problem 217 to illustrate how we solve this problem. So before we would have had forces in a single plane, but here we've got these forces that are parallel to each other. Okay, And again, we use the principle, principle of moments to get a resultant. Remember, guys, don't lose sight of what we're doing here. We are trying to reduce a system of forces to its simplest form so that the net external effect is the same. And thus far, we've looked at 2D systems, coplanar systems, etc. Now we're going to look at a parallel force system. So, But we use exactly the same idea. We select, so here we've got a plate. Okay, and we've got forces parallel to the y-axis. We select a point O and we transfer all the forces there, just like we did before, where you've got a, a you've got a bunch of forces, right? We select a point O and we transfer all the forces there. We transfer this guy there, we transfer that guy there, we transfer that guy there. And then we also need to include their moments, right? Okay, so we do that as well over here. So put them all at that point O and sum them up. Okay, so we've got, so if that is, that is positive Y, we've got minus 50 plus 500 minus 300 plus 200. That's what we got there, J. So our resultant force is in the J direction, or sorry, in the Y direction. And it's and we've put it at O. Now, now, we need to consider the mo the moments due to those forces about that point O. Right. So when we're working in three dimensions, this is just my suggestion. You you obviously develop your own one, but we need to see. Um, we're trying to get the resultant moment in I J K form. So the way that I would suggest is consider 
um, one axis first. So as you can see here, we're just looking at something in, uh, about the x-axis and then something about the z-axis. So take one axis and look at how those forces are causing moments just about that axis. Focus just on one thing. So you write out, okay, I want to look at just the moments that these forces are causing about the x-axis. So let's, let's say I. So does this cause a moment about the x-axis? Yes, because number one, it's not passing through the x-axis. And number two, it's not parallel to the x-axis. So there is this uh, perpendicular distance there, right? And it's at 0.35. So the magnitude of this moment is 0.35 times 50. But is it positive or negative? So if you curl your fingers, remember here's the moment arm. Curl your, your Sorry, you point your fingers in that direction and curl it towards the 50. You'll see that it causes that kind of rotation, which means that your thumb is pointing in the positive x. So we're going to have 50 times 0.35. Okay. Now, is that force causing a moment? No, because it's passing through the x-axis. Is that force causing a moment? No, it's passing through the x-axis. Is that one? Yes, because there is a perpendicular distance of 0.35. Okay. So, but this one you can see is causing that kind of rotation. And if you curl your fingers like that, you'll find your thumb is pointing in the negative x direction. So that's why we have a minus 300 times 0.35. Guys, what are we trying to do? We are trying to just calculate the resultant moment, okay, caused by all these forces about 0.0. So now we've got the resultant moment about the x-axis. So this is the x component, the, the scalar component about the x-axis. Then what about the y-axis? Well, all of these guys are, perpen are parallel to the y-axis. So that's why we don't have any y component about the y-axis. They're all parallel. But then what about the z-axis? There's the z-axis. Is this causing a moment? No. Is this causing a moment? No. What about this? Yes. There's a perpendicular distance. So it's 200 times 0.5. But there's my D. And there's my... So it, it goes like this. Right? So if I curl my fingers like that, my, my, my thumb will go in the negative Z direction. So that is 200 times 0.3... Uh, times 0.5, that's why there's a negative there, right, times uh, about the z-axis. And then what about that guy? Yes. And you'll see that this one also rotates like that, and it is negative. And so anyways, there is my resultant moment. We have a resultant force and a resultant moment. And because this is a free vector, right, we just place it wherever we want, so but we choose just for simplicity to place it right there. Okay, so this means that if I am pointing my thumb in the direction of that vector, then you can see. Uh, I know it's difficult to show you on the screen, but point your thumb in the direction of that of this M, your right hand, and then see how this plate is is rotating or there's a tendency for this plate to rotate now this is good we have now replaced it with a a force and a couple okay so we've replaced it now with a force couple system this system here is equivalent to the original system um, in terms of just the net external effect but now what if we wanted to so if you remember in a two-dimensional system, we would replace that system with a single force and um, a couple, right? Whatever. Something like that. 
But if we wanted to just now take a further step and replace this with a single force, well, just remember that we, we could do that. And so this is what we want to do as well. We want to replace now this system with a single force that has the same effect, the same translational, translational, meaning straight line, and the same rotational effect. Okay. So what do we do? We use the principle of moments. What is the principle of moments? It is that the resultant moment is equal to R cross F. Okay, so make sure that you understand this. We've done this a lot in the two-dimensional case. So make sure that you understand that, that concept. So we've got the, the resultant moment, um, which we calculated calculated here. Right, and then we say, okay, but th th this force, if it's applied there, will give the same effect. Okay, so I've got this the plate. If I apply, or not there, but at some point on this plate, um, will give me the same translational and rotational effect about that point. So I say. R cross R is equal to this to the resultant moment. Okay. The question is, where do I have to put this force, this R, on the plate? Where? So that it has the same effect as a force and a couple moments about point O. Where do I have to put it on the plate? So that it has the same effect. So we say R cross R is equal to the moment. Okay. So if you remember we're doing the cross product. So here you can try this out. I, J, K. And you've got X, Y, Z. And you've got a 350 there. And you've got a 0, a 0. Okay. So what do we do? How do we calculate the cross product or the determinant? We open up I. And we cross that, that out, we cross that out, and we say, remember that motion? That times that, minus that times that. So I've got minus 350z, because that's zero. Then we put a minus there, j, and we open up that, and we cross out that column, we cross out that row, and we get x times zero, minus z times zero. So we've got a zero here, which makes sense, because I'm not going to get any component about the y-axis, right? So there's a zero here. This is zero. And then we cross out, we say plus k, and we cross out the, the column k, and there, and we say x times 350. 350x minus y times zero. So I've got that. So my, my uh, component about the x-axis is minus 350z. That's what I got there. And then I've got 350x times k. Alright. Now we're trying to solve for x and z. We're trying to solve for x and z. Because we're trying to find the point on the plate that we can put this, this resultant force R so that it has the same effect. So there I've got something in the z direction and I've got something in the z direction. So I equate... That's 350 with a minus 125. And I equate the minus 350z with a minus 87.5. Right, because we're comparing. Right, this is the principle of moments. The left side equals the right side. So the, the components in the z direction equal the components in the z direction. The x direction equals the x direction. If there was a y direction, it would equal the y direction. And so... 350x equals minus 125. I solve for x. I get minus 0.357. I solve for z. I get 0.25. Okay. Now what does this all mean? It means I can take this force. Let's find minus. Okay. So x is positive in that direction. So minus 0.357. Wherever somewhere over there, it's on the negative side, and z is plus 0.25, so there's that point. So 
ignore this, ignore that, ignore all the forces. If I take, if I apply that resultant force at that point, then you will see that it will have the same moment. It will cause the same moment about point O. Alright, I hope you can see that. That, that force, that R, that we apply at that point, at this location, X and Z, we apply it in the Y direction, at that point, it will cause the same translational effect and rotation about point O. You'll see that that MO um, matches, it corresponds to that resultant force, um, applying a couple moments. Okay, guys, this is an example of a parallel system.